Thank you, Pastor Will. Can we give it up for Pastor Will? Man, it's just amazing to be a part of the team here at Two Rivers Church. And Pastor Jared, man, what a great message. The idea of leadership and legacy and cat, man, uh, so good, man. What a, well, skillfully how he covered worship and devotion. Like Pastor Will mentioned, my name is John. I serve as the executive pastor here in the Montrose Community Pastor. It's just my privilege and pleasure to welcome each and every one of you this week. Man, I'm going to ask you, if you just take a moment, let's right, right now, I want to take a moment, let's pray for Thrive City Church right now. Let's just all bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have charged us uh, with a rescue operation for Thrive City. Father, uh, we pray for Pastor Ben and their family, Father. We pray for all the people at Thrive City, Father, that you would be with them today, that you would be with Pastor Will as he delivers a message on a tough Sunday there. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So I have a big question that I want to ask for us today. The kind of the question that I want to kind of camp around today is this idea, how can we follow God's plan for us while also doing our part to seek and serve him? You know, in 2014, Pastor Will and Pastor Crystal invited me and my wife to go to the Ignite Conference in Allison Park Church. And at that conference, we really had this encounter with God, a moment where we really surrendered our, our hearts fully and went all in. We kind of, me and Candace were standing there, and we kind of just had this moment where we we're like, you know what, we're going to go all in. We're ready to lean into what God has for us in our future. We're ready to surrender our lives to him. And we really believed in that moment that we were actually going to be called into missions, that we were going to become missionaries and go to Africa. In fact, that's what we talked about on the way home from that conference, but but. God had other plans. He had a plan that we would become church planners. And I can remember going through the journey of raising the funds. I can remember going through the journey of building the team. And then I can remember uh, the moment that I had to really surrender my finances and my retirement, and just really move everything in with Jesus. And what I discovered in that moment was this, and I want you to get this, that, that following his plan involves both trusting his direction and taking active, responsible steps to serve him. See, well, my story can seem extreme, like, hey, I put all my retirement, I quit my job and went all the way in. God's story for each of us is unique, and his story for you is significant. We all face common struggles. We, we all face places and times where we have to take steps and we have to take responsibility, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our workplace, whether it's in our uh, communities. And really, life can be a balancing act. And like Solomon, we must understand the roles and responsibility in the larger plan of life. We need to constantly navigate how we align our actions with God's sovereign plan for our life. Listen, I want you to get this. Doing a plan requires that each and every one of us make a plan. So what's God calling you to? Where is your gifting? Where is your passion? Because oftentimes at the spot where your gifting and passion align points directly to where God's calling you to. I'm going to encourage you today, start making a plan. Make a real plan. Take a tangible step. Listen, God's grace alone is sufficient for salvation. But it, to grow in the person God wants you to be, we must actively respond to his grace with obedience and faithfulness. You know, as Pastor Jared read through 1 Chronicles 28, 9, and 10, I saw three things that really stood out to me. This idea of divine choice, the idea of human responsibility, and the idea of conditional promise. God sovereignly chose Solomon for a task, to build a temple, and it highlights God's control and purpose in appointing leaders. Listen, our responsibility is to faithfully embrace the role he gives us, trusting that his plans are perfect and his timing is precise, that we all have responsibility in this. Solomon's responsibility was to seek God and to serve him faithfully. And while God's plan for us are sovereign, our active pursuit and faithful service are essential to fulfilling our God-given purpose. And the conditional promise, the conditional nature of God's promise, seek God leads to finding him, but forsaking him leads to rejection. Listen, when we seek God earnestly, we'll find him and experience his presence. 
But if we turn away and forsake him, we risk losing closeness and favor that comes from walking with him. So this really prompts me to ask some questions today. What responsibility has God given you? How are you seeking God in your daily decisions? Listen, God is calling you to embrace your role with wholehearted devotion and a willing mind as Solomon was instructed. So I want you to write down these three questions I have for you. I want you to think about these questions. Am I acknowledging God in my plans is the first question. Are you acknowledging God in your plans? Are you making plans and asking God to just go along? Are you acknowledging God in your plans? Number two, am I earnestly seeking him? Are you seeking him daily? And then number three, what changes might I need to make to align my will in my life with the calling that God has for my life? You know, we regularly acknowledge God in our plans when we move beyond pursuing our own ambitions and align our lives with his divine will. Earnestly seeking God uh, depends on a relationship with him, opening our hearts to his direction and allowing him to strengthen us, strengthen our faith and position us for what he has for us. And by acknowledging where we, we need to change and adjust our attitudes, priorities, and actions, we can fully embrace and achieve the purpose that God has divi- designed each and every one of us for. You know, Solomon was chosen to build the temple. God has chosen you. God has a call on your life. So what's your next step? What's the next step you're gonna take because God has chosen you? It's time. It's time to get on the team. Listen, I want everyone to stop. Get off your phone for a second. Stop scrolling. Look here right now. Everyone look. You will never walk into God's plan for your life riding on the bench. Get on the team. God has got a plan and a purpose for your life, and you're never going to do it sitting on the bench. You need to walk into that plan. God uniquely designed you to be you. We will never be the church that we're called to be without you on the team. So today's the day. Today's the day to get into next steps. Today's the day to join the team. Today's the day to say, you know what? This is my passion. This is my gifting. I'm pointed in a direction. I'm going to walk into the the plan that God has for me. I'm going to earnestly seek him. I believe that God's got something for you right now, today, in this place. So listen. This isn't about doing more. It isn't about, it's about aligning our hearts and our actions with God's purpose and allowing his grace to work through us. God bless you. Thank you for letting me be with you.